Scientists have discovered the hottest known exoplanet, also known as an ultra-hot Jupiter, with temperatures high enough to vaporize iron and titanium. For more on this, I want to bring in Paul Delaney, Professor of Physics and Astronomy at York University, joining us from Toronto. Always good to see you, Paul. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Erin. So explain the significance of exoplanets like this ultra-hot Jupiter and why this is a breakthrough discovery. Well, I guess exoplanets just keep surprising us. You know, 20 years ago, when we didn't really know that other exoplanets existed, if somebody had said, we're going to find an exoplanet that is hotter than half the stars in the Milky Way galaxy, we all would have politely laughed at you. <laughs> Yet that's what we have in this particular instance. KELT 9b is its official title. And as you said, it's got a surface temperature of over 3,800 degrees Celsius. That's two thirds the, the temperature of our own star. The fact that this object is orbiting so close to its parent star, has such a hot atmosphere, has, has got iron and titanium in gaseous form, just sort of blows our mind. So we're trying to get a handle on all sorts of exoplanets, trying to understand how they formed, where they formed, what their evolution can be, all really with trying to answer the question of where can we be looking for life? You know, we're accustomed to looking for life on planets like Earth. You wouldn't look on a uh, KELT 9b for life, but the sheer fact that that planet can exist talks to us about the variety of exoplanets that are out there, and that's just amazing stuff. Let's move on to this experiment that is in progress right now, Japanese spacecraft Hayabusa 2, looking to land on the asteroid Ryugu. So what is the purpose of this mission? Well, quite simply, it's to bring back material. Uh, Hayabusa 1, back about 10 years ago, brought back a few milligrams, a really small amount of material from another asteroid by the name of Itakawa. Hayabusa 2 is building on the success of that mission and wants to bring back hopefully tens of grams of material from what we call a carbonaceous asteroid, a C-type asteroid. This is an object which you know, has its uh, formation right back at the beginning of the solar system. Primordial material is there, including a lot of sort of carbonaceous material. That's what the material that you and I are made of. So we're really trying to get a good idea of how the solar system formed, how the material was distributed in the early solar system, and again, trying to give us a handle on why it was that Earth actually ended up with so much life. This asteroid may give us some clues to what was going on four and a half billion years ago. It's fascinating stuff, Paul. I could talk to you about it all day, but we're running out of time, so I'm going to have to let you go. But I thank you, as always, for your insight. You're welcome, Aaron. Paul Delaney, Professor of Physics and Astronomy at York University.